Hello and welcome to another video on standard form and in this video we're going to take a look at how to add and subtract numbers that are written in standard form. So I have got a whole playlist on standard form because I've done quite a lot of videos on this topic so please take a look at that playlist uh, if you haven't already and you'd like some extra practice on standard form. So let's kick things off. I've got a question here it says 5 times 10 to the power 4 add 3 times 10 to the power 4. So notice I don't need any brackets in here because we're doing the multiplication before addition. So we've got this number that's written in standard form and we're adding on this number that's also written in standard form. Now the reason I've written it out twice is because there's two ways you could think about doing this. So what we could do is we could write these numbers out in full and then just add them together. So let's do that first. So 5 times 10 to the power 4, well we're going to have 5, oh I've used a different colour, let me go back to my dark blue. So we've got the 5 and then uh, times 10 to the power 4, so we've got a times 10 four times. So times 10 once, twice, three times, four times. So that's 50,000, which is this number, and we're adding on this number here. Now I can see that the power of 10 is the same, so instead of 50,000, this one's just going to be 30,000. So we're going to do 80,000. Sorry, I've given you the answer there. So we've got 50,000 plus 30,000, which is obviously 80,000. And then obviously we've got the question in standard form, so we'd need to write our answer in standard form. So because we're still dealing in the tens of thousands, the power is going to be the same. So this time it's going to be 8 times 10 to the power 4. So this would be my final answer, 8 times 10 to the power 4. Now the other way to think about this, which is much, much simpler, is just to think about adding these two numbers together. So notice we've got 5 of something, and then we're adding on 3 of that same something. So these two things here, it doesn't matter what they are, but you can see they're exactly the same. So if we've got 5 of them, and then we're adding on 3 of them, well in total we're going to have 8 of them. So we're going to have 8 of whatever we've got here, and you can see we've got 10 to the power 4. So it's going to be 8 times 10 to the power 4. So all I did was just add these two numbers together. And a bit, If that's a bit confusing, let me just change it slightly. Let's say we had 5a plus 3a. Hopefully you all know how to simplify this. We've got the same thing here. So if we've got 5 of something and we add on 3 of something, we've got 8 of that something. And in this case, that something is a. But in this case up here, that something was 10 to the power 4. So we just need to add these two numbers together. So as long as the powers of 10 are the same, we can just add these two numbers together. Okay, let's do another example. And this time, notice our powers of 10 are not the same. So let's do it like we did before where we write the numbers out in full. So we've got 6 times 10 to the power 3. So that's going to be 6 and then 1, 2, 3. So we've got 6,000. And then we're adding on 8 times 10 to the power 2. Well, that's 800. So I'm just going to make sure I line my place values up. So we've got 6,000 plus 800. So that's going to be 6,800. And now we need to write that in standard form again because our question is in standard form. So that's going to be 6.8 multiplied by 10 to the power of... So our decimal point is starting here, 6.8. We're going 1, 2, 3 to the right. So we're going to multiply by 10 three times. So our answer is going to be 6.8 times 10 to the power 3. Now again, I'm going to do the same calculation, but this time I'm not going to write the numbers out in full. So you might be wondering, well, we can't add these things together because we've got different powers of 10. And you would be absolutely right. You can't do 6 plus 8 to get 14 and then use some power of 10. We could only add numbers together that have the same powers of 10. So what we're going to do is we're going to have to change one of the numbers so that the powers of 10 are the same. And always change, my little tip for you, is to always change the one with the smaller power of 10. So we're going to keep this first number the same. So I'm just going to copy that out, out again. 6 times 10 to the power 3. Now I'm going to rewrite this number, but the power of 10 is going to be, so it's going to be 10 to the power 3. So our powers of 10 are the same. So notice we've multiplied this number by 10 to go from 10 to power 2 to 10 to the power 3. So to keep the, to keep the number the same, I'm going to have to do the opposite to this number. So if I'm multiplying this number by 10, I have to divide this number by 10. 
So this is going to be 0 0.8 times 10 to the power of 3. Okay, these two numbers here are exactly the same. So now I've got the same powers of 10. Notice I can just add our base numbers together. So 6 plus 0 0.8, well that gives us 6.8. And you can see it's going to be 6.8 times 10 to the power 3. And lo and behold, it's exactly the same number as we got here. Now, one thing you might be wondering is that I said that this method over here was a lot better and a lot quicker than this one over here. But you might be thinking, actually, no, I found this one a lot easier. And that's perfectly normal. That is usually what people say when we've got really small powers of 10. But what about if we had much higher powers of 10? So let's go through one more example. So what we've got here is 8 times 10 to the power 70 plus 3 times 10 to the power 68. So we've got massive powers here. Now, are we going to write out these numbers in full? Now, hopefully your answer to that is definitely not. So it would involve writing 8 and then 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, dot, 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 dot. And we'd have to write out 70 zeros. And once we'd done that, we'd have to write this number out in full as well. So it's going to take an awful long time to even write out the question for that one. So hopefully you can see that especially with this question, this method is going to be a lot more efficient to use. So let's go through this question using this method. So we're going to keep the power of 10 that's the highest the same. So I'm going to rewrite this number. So 8 times 10 to the power 70. And now for this number, we just need to change this number so it has the same power of 10. So it's going to be something times 10 to the power 70. So to go from to go from 10 to the power 60 to 10 to the power 70, what are we doing? Well, we're multiplying by 10 twice. So we're multiplying by 10 squared effectively. So if we're multiplying by 10 squared with this number, to keep the calc to keep the number the same, we're going to have to do the opposite to this number. So for this number, we're going to have to divide by 10 squared. So if we divide by 10 once, that'll be 0 0.3. If we divide by 10 twice, that'll be 0 0.03. So it's going to be 0 0.03 times 10 to the power 70. And now we can just add our base numbers together. So we can add 8 and 0 0.03, and that gives us 8.03. Uh, and that's going to be times 10 to the power 70. So notice I've done this question already, and I'd probably still still be writing out the question at this stage if I'd used this method over here. So it's a lot more efficient to use. So let's give you a few questions to have a go at now. OK, I've got eight questions for you to have a go at. So pause the video and see if you can answer these eight questions. And just be careful. I've got some subtractions in here as well. And one last thing is to try and make sure that your answer is in standard form. OK, let's go through the first one. So we've got 2 times 10 to the power of 3 plus 4 times 10 to the power of 3. So our powers of 10 are exactly the same. So all we need to do is add our base numbers together. So 2 plus 4 is 6. So our answer is going to be 6 times 10 to the power of 3. OK, question 2. We've got 7 times 10 to the power of 5 plus 2 times 10 to the power of 5. So again, our powers of 10 are exactly the same. So all we need to do is add our base numbers together. So 7 plus 2 is 9. So it's going to be 9 and then times 10 to the power 5. 9 times 10 to the power 5. Question 3, we've got 9 times 10 to the power 9 minus 6 times 10 to the power 9. So this time, instead of an addition, we've got a subtraction. But the process is exactly the same. So our powers of 10 are exactly the same. So all we need to do is subtract our base numbers instead of add them. So 9 minus 6 is 3. So it's going to be 3 and then times 10 to the power 9. So exactly the same process, but instead of adding our base numbers together, we subtract them. Question 4, 8 times 10 to the power 3 plus 5 times 10 to the power 3. So our powers of 10 are the same. So let's add together our base numbers. 8 plus 5 is 13. So it's going to be 13 and then times 10 to the power 3. However, this is not the final answer. Hopefully the eagle-eyed among you would have spotted something wrong with this. This is not written in standard form. 
So notice this number here, we've gone above 10. So our base number always has to be between 1 and 10. So to get this number between 1 and 10, we're going to have to divide by 10. So if we divide our base number by 10, we get 1.3. But to keep the number the same, we're going to have to do the opposite to this number. So if we're dividing this number by 10, we have to multiply this number by 10. So it's going to be 1.3 times 10 to the power 4. These two numbers are exactly the same, but this one is now written in standard form. So this would be my final answer. Question 5. 3 times 10 to the power 4 plus 3 times 10 to the power 3. So this time our powers of 10 are different. So I'm going to write out the one with the largest power of 10 first. So 3 times 10 to the power 4. And then we're going to add on. Now I'm not going to write this number down. I'm going to the power of 10 I'm going to write down is going to be 10 to the power 4. I need these to be the same. But notice I've increased this number by a power of 10. So I've multiplied this number by 10 to get this number. So I have to do the opposite to this number. So if I divide this number by 10, that's going to give me 0 0.3 times 10 to the power 4. So again, these two numbers are the same. They're just written out in a slightly different way. It's just so that my powers of 10 now align. So now I can just add our base numbers together. 3 plus 0 0.3 is 3.3. .3. So it's going to be 3.3 .3 times 10 to the power of 4. Question 6. 6 times 10 to the power 7 minus 4 times 10 to the power 6. So again, we've got a minus here. So let's write out the larger power of 10 first. And for this number, our power of 10 is going to be 10 to the power 7. So we multiplied by 10 to get go from this to this. So we need to divide by 10. So 4 divided by 10 is 0.4. So we've got 6 times 10 to the power 7 minus 0.4 times 10 to the power 7. We can just subtract our base numbers. So 6 minus 0.4 is going to be 5.6. So it's 5.6 times 10 to the power 7. Question 7, 8 times 10 to the power 3 plus 3 times 10 to the power 2. So I'm going to keep this number the same. And for this number, my power of 10 is going to be 3. So it's going to be times 10 to the power 3. So again, I multiplied by 10. So I need to divide this number by 10. So it's going to be 0 0.3. So now we can add the two numbers together, the base numbers. 8 plus 0 0.3 is 8.3. So it's going to be 8.3 times 10 to the power 3. And last but not least, we've got question 8. 7 times 10 to the power 15 minus 3 times 10 to the power 13. So slightly trickier, this one. But we're going to keep this number the same because it has the higher power of 10. And for this number over here, we're going to have to have the same power of 10. So it's going to be 10 to the power 15. Notice this time I've multiplied by 10 twice. So I need to divide this number by 10 twice. So 3 divided by 10 is 0 0.3. If I divide by 10 again, it's 0 0.03. So this time it's going to be 0 0.03 times 10 to the power of 15. So now what we can do is we've got the same power of 10, so we can just subtract our base numbers. 7 subtract 0 0.03. Well, that's going to be 6.97. And then it's going to be times 10 to the power 15. So how did you get on with those eight questions? And which method did you use to calculate your answers? So there might still be some of you who used my original method where you write the numbers out in full. And that's perfectly fine if you're happy with that. This is just the method that I like to use. Now, you might be pleased to know that we are almost at the end of the standard form playlist. So I've got one more video that I'm going to go through. And that involves just a bit of problem solving using standard form. So hopefully you'll join me for that video. And thanks again for watching. Take care.